So welcome to the first Tech Talk Taco Tuesday from Ramiro's in Pahrump, Nevada. And I'm Jimmy Lewis with Dirt Bike Test. Um, this is uh, <laughs> it's kind of a, an S show. Um, we basically what I did was about this morning at about what time did I uh, what time did I text you, Mitch? So Nine. I got a text at 8:30 this morning. About 8:30 this morning, I texted him and said we're gonna go. Uh, with uh, some crazy idea I had because I have the technology, I just have to make it work, and I haven't been pushing to do that. So we got our test of the 2019 Honda CR450X published, and we figured that would be the main discussion subject for this evening. So I um, started plugging in wires and connecting to the internets and figuring out how this stuff works. Uh, we've done it before with a few of our other guys. Actually, we had three or four guys working on it in the background, and I decided it was time to make it work for us. So here we are. It's our first one. Um, we hopefully can stay connected. We're having a little bit of connectivity issues with the network here. Um, having a, having a, a, a beer, soon some tacos, and maybe a little bit of tequila later on. Um, and so if you have, um, whoa, we lost our connection. So we'll see what happens. I'm not sure if it's live again. Let's see. Um, I think it's still recording. We'll figure it out. It just dropped on my end on one of the devices. It would help when we start starting seeing the comments. Actually, I think it's back. I don't know. Um, we'll start watching the comments and start asking questions. Um, this is kind of a, it's a, I've decided I was going to force myself to do this so that we can see how it works, figure out the problems. If I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail miserably live on Facebook <laughs> and I'm going to learn from it and we'll kind of keep it going. But um, basically, we'll start out by, um, okay, there we go. Got some comments and stuff like that. We are going to um, talk a little bit about the Honda 450X. Uh, hopefully, you've gone on to dirtbiketest.com, uh, read a lot of the test, some of the test, whatever you want to. That's a great place to start with our uh, questions and things you want to know about the bike. And then we can roll off into, if we get some decent questions about really anything else, uh, we will do our best um, to answer those. And it all kind of depends on the technologies because I'm watching my computer screen right now and it kind of starts spinning and going slow. Um, let's see. My guest, my guest tonight was going to be uh, Big John, uh, John Perkins, who does a lot of uh, testing and photo modeling for us here at Dirt Bike Test. He's stuck at work. So that's that's for prior proper planning I let him know at about two o'clock this afternoon uh, that he might be able to join us but <laughs> we see how that goes um, and I'm noticing that it was a little bit of cutouts and stuff but we're kind of getting going um, so anyways to start with Honda 450x uh, we've been testing a lot of different bikes lately um, a KTM 350 XC is one of the bikes in our stable we have we're working on a 250 FX comparison so off-road 250s. We have the Honda CR uh, 250RX. We just got re-got, because we rode it back east, a Yamaha YZ 250FX, and we're waiting on the KTM 250XCF, uh, which I was supposed to hear more about today. We we're kind of planning on doing the comparison next week. Uh, the weather in California caused some uh, problems, but it's beautiful out here in the desert. We still have some wet dirt, and we'll be getting on that and if this stuff works we'll be able to come to you live and talk to you about it so look what we got coming in here coming in hot Woo! <laughs> is uh tequila so and as as we progress more onto the show i'll explain this and some other uh things um i'm a tequila risto here is that correct janie tequila risto yeah after you have 150 certified uh, tastes of tequila, um, you can, you're classified as that, and then we all know how it goes from there. So this is after hours uh, stuff, uh, the tequila tasting. I got, my, I got my chips over here. 
and uh, my water and beer so to keep me hydrated and we'll keep going so the honda 450x is honda's green sticker legal um so it's california green sticker legal which is a big deal for the rest of the country it's coming as much as you don't want it to dirt bike off-road only bike that's emissions compliant and so there's a lot of things going on you have regulations from epa you have regulations from carb that determine it's the same kind of stuff that goes on for on-road standards it's really um when these manufacturers go to make a machine that you're allowed to legally ride off road, they have to meet sound requirements. They have to meet emission requirements. They have to, um, uh, there's certain requirements if there's lights on the motorcycle. So a long time ago, you know, when we, when California made the green sticker, um, there was, it started with, uh, really less sound equals more ground and we're going to have spark arresters and then there was spark arrestor requirements for it and then there was sound requirements and the sound requirements have come down and then they started tacking emissions requirements onto that and it's pretty difficult these days to make a bike meet all those standards uh, in most places you can take a motocross bike and go get your off-road registration like here in nevada we can get an off-road sticker and ride a motocross bike off-road so it's different literally from state to state and California has these pretty stringent regulations and it's you've seen it with KTM they used to have two strokes you were able to get green stickers for and then the laws changed and now you're not able to get green stickers for two strokes and with the EXC now being uh, a little bit uh, you know there used to be XCW and then then that went away and now there's only EXC because KTM figures that you're going to take your dirt bike and your your dual sport bike and convert it into a dirt bike by taking the um, sticker the um, lights and everything off and I just got my note on what tequila I just got so <laughs> I'm getting distracted here uh, <laughs> I was trying to now I wasn't trying to figure out I haven't had a taste of it yet um, anyways so having a green sticker dirt bike is kind of important because they do sell the majority of these bikes in California and there was kind of a lack of those since the KTM's left the XCW's left and Honda's had the X for a long time uh, Yamaha's had the WR and and those bikes are considered corked up the, the CRF X was considered corked up because it was so quiet the muffler was so restrictive and um, Honda kind of has a standard where they always want the throttle to go wide open and Yamaha actually puts a throttle stop in there so the throttle only goes halfway and it, it's all to meet these sound regulations. So that being said, it's been a long time since 2006 since Honda has changed this bike. Uh, we uh, got a chance to ride it late in October. Uh, we took the bike home from the intro, dirt bike tested, and we basically took it out and started riding it. 1,500 miles later, uh, we finally got the test published today. We have um, learned quite a bit about the bike. Um, we rode it for a long time just completely stock, standard, standard, um, stock tires, stock muffler, everything. And when we left the intro, that was the first thing I said. I said, Honda's done a really good job producing a bike that an average guy can take and put in his garage and take it out and go ride it and it's going to perform acceptably it's going to do a really good job um, you know getting them around on trails out in the desert you could take it down to Baja completely stock and basically go ride the Baja 1000 course and probably be pretty happy with that motorcycle um, if you wanted a bike to go take and chase your kids around out in the desert it's a really good motorcycle so things like that and then you start going into what's this bike going to be asked to do. Um, the good thing is it's based off the CRF R motocross bike and it carries the same suspension components. And they're super high level components that work at motocross. They're just tuned for off road. So I don't know the specific spring rates and what they've done um, to, you know, which settings but the off-road settings are more uh you know basically softer 
and you know they allow this the the bike to move around in the stroke it's not so stiff and the chassis is tuned down a little bit so it's not so rigid and it's meant to provide kind of a you know a trail riding uh style but also allow itself to work you know off-road and going fast kind of and as these bikes have uh gotten better they're becoming like a little bit stiffer overall it's more of an aggressive nature we talk about this in the test so you can go and ride it pretty hard without having to um you know go get your suspension modified right away uh it probably reaches right up to the point where you could race the bike um and i feel like i could go out at at my ability level and the speed that i want to go i could take the bike and pretty much stock um, go race it in a Heron Hound, something like a National Heron Hound, um, or a Grand Prix. When you start going past Grand Prix, anything on the motocross, it starts getting a little bit maybe too soft, kind of wallowy. Um, it's something that the clickers aren't going to really um, accomplish. The clickers seem to just work on the comfort, not necessarily the action of the suspension. And net net, um, it's a pretty good package. Uh, the other thing, and we're going to get to the motor a little bit farther on here the other thing we start talking about is people look at the weight of the bike and when you're looking at it comparing it to a ktm uh it's heavy on the scale but when you ride it it's pretty impressive how they've masked the weight now if you ride it um back to back with like a r or an rx it definitely feels a little bit heavier and it's a little bit more planted and but it still has an agile feel to it even when we put a light, slightly larger gas tank on it, which sometimes affects the handling and, and the weight feel. But overall, that feeling, um, the bike still is active. It steers pretty well um, through the foot pegs. It's light in the handlebars. And combined with just as a whole package, it's it's actually pretty, pretty good. So um, we are looking at the thing here. Uh, Ramiro's needs faster internet. <laughs> We're going to work on that, I think. Um, I guess it's kind of getting uh, cut out. The sound is actually okay. That's good. Um, that was the biggest thing we were working on. As you've noticed in some of our other videos, our sound has been, uh, to put it politely, crap. And uh, we are uh, trying to make it better. And then, let's see, we're going to get under the motor here. I'm scrolling down through my through the comments here to see where we're at on the uh, live feed. And it's amazing how you have friends that will start texting you because they know you're doing this about and putting stupid stuff <laughs> on the phone. Like, are you doing that, Mitch? Not yet. Not yet? Yeah. So no worries. Um, Mitch is my technical advisor here right now. Uh, he's uh, just ho holding down the bar stool so it doesn't get up and run away at Romero's um, so we'll work on the uh, on the internets and now we're gonna talk about the motor because this is what everybody wants to know can you make the Honda into what you want to make it into and the answer is yes it just depends on what level you want to go to so we've already kind of started playing around with it and modifying it the first thing that everybody's gonna want to do is take the heavy quiet muffler and throw it away not so quick because we did that the first thing we did was got a, it was actually an early prototype FMF muffler. It was a Q. They've changed some stuff inside the muffler and they were working on the, the <coughs> mega bomb up front. And so we got to test some of the different versions of it. And if you take that muffler and throw it onto that bike, guess what you do? You make it a little bit louder and slower because in order, when you open up that exhaust system, when you start making it run a little bit freer, it needs more fuel. Um, Honda's done a really good job of making it super rideable stock stock and in order to do that you have to get some sort of a you can't really get into the ECU it's a locked ECU so since we're out here in Nevada and we can make it into a closed course competition bike we got a JD jetting tuner and then we started playing around with the fueling on it and again these were kind of early um, uh, tunes that JD had worked on we spent um, a little bit of time working with that we actually went to kind of a newer version of their tuner that's a little more sensitive to the rpm and the throttle position and got some really good settings so the first thing the muffler does is it gives you some sound and a lot of people equate sound with power but i don't um, i kind of feel how the bike pulls and when you 
put just the exhaust system on, it gets kind of lean and it gets kind of kind of jerky, um, and the throttle response kind of goes flat. It gets it gets more, but it's really it's really flat and jerky. So I wouldn't recommend unless you plan on doing the exhaust and some fueling as a combination. I wouldn't re recommend doing anything with the exhaust. And one of the biggest advantages of the exhaust, and I think it's four to seven pounds weight savings. I don't remember exactly. Um, and we'll write about that when we do the kind of the hop up article. Um, we will f we'll get you the, the real numbers and stuff, but the the taking that weight off the back of the motorcycle makes a pretty big difference. Um, so when you start combining with fueling and, and you get some of that throttle response and it, you start adding the fuel to it and it comes back, then the bike starts getting pretty um, what we call more normal, something like you'd feel like an R and RX, the throttle response. Um, it's still, um, I would say a little bit tame or tuned more for off-road riding than motocross. It doesn't really have that super strong snap or hip, but it has, you know, pretty decent, um, acceleration and pickup and it's by no means is it, is it slow. Um, so, and then on top of that, inside of the, the, the bike, the airbox lid it's actually a cover that's on its stock you just can unbolt it and take it off you don't have to cut anything like on the old bikes and then that thing is flowing plenty of air to work completely as a system and, and it does make a difference when the airbox is on or off especially when you can kind of alter the fueling so in those simple steps um, muffler uh, muffler and header uh, adding the fuel tuning device and then taking off the uh, top of the air box, uh, you can get it to have race bike like performance because that's what it is now. And you don't have to go really any farther. You don't have to dig in there and start taking off emissions things and 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 the the air recirculation and stuff. Although I will tell you that you can plug up the ex the the air intake for the exhaust gas recirculation thing, and then a lot of the backfiring goes away as a kind of a stage one or a step one or something that's easy to do, um, that is uh, what you can expect out of the bike. Now, I was trying to get a hold of the guys over at JCR to find out what they're gonna do to their race bike, and it could be everything from just completely swap an R top end and R ignition or RX onto the bike for their race bike. Um, because all of the stuff bolts right onto the top end. The R stuff will bolt onto the top end of the X and the L if you need it. So there's always that, but that's really far out there and probably a little bit outside the needs of, of most, um, most riders these days. I think, and I'm completely happy with just where we're at with the, the pipe and fuel tuner and airbox lid off. So, um, I guess the questions are going to start coming. What is it like compared to the, you know, the KTM? Um, we've ridden it back to back with the KTM 350, the KTM 500, um, some older KTM 500s. Back to my beloved Husaberg 570. Um, yeah, it's lacking power compared to that, but I mean, come on, Husaberg 570 could be one of the best four-stroke motors ever. Um, and we're going to turn over to the uh, Facebook comments right now and see what the questions we're asking about are. Let's see. Yeah, hey, Jimmy. Let's see. That's a good one. I'm going to have to answer that. Hey, hold on. Um, this would be the silver. This would be the uh, 191 um, silver tequila. This would be my 182nd tequila, 188th. I don't know. I have to consult my uh, – oh, wait. No, wait, that's, it's not the brand. This isn't 191. What's the no, brand? That's, your total number. that's my total number of tequilas. Okay. This is, no, this, this is, I'm doing math now. This is 189. So, um, cheers. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think it's going to make the favorite list. Hey Janie, what brand is this? Shoot. You don't know. <laughs> Shamukos. Yeah, Shamukos tequila. It means devil something, evidently. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's gonna, I don't know if it, how many, I don't think it's getting happy faces. At least the silver. Hmm. Okay, back to the dirt bikes. Um, let's scroll. 
Uh, yeah, I'm getting a ride home. Are you getting back on the wagon to race the Mint 400? Me? Uh, I would have to drink a lot more of this to want to race the Mint 400. I'm going to leave that to the professionals. Um, there are rumors Ricky Brabeck's going to be out there. He will probably be riding a Honda CRF450X. Um, I'm sure by that time they'll have that thing tuned up. Uh, scrolling down, uh, round on Jimmy Lewis. Let's see. Hi from the bar. Hi, Janie. Yeah, I got your message. Uh, let's see. Hey, camera guy, I don't want to see his beer belly. Hey, this thing's tight, bro. <laughs> I've been doing sit-ups and stuff. I didn't turn into a car racer in one day. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, I managed to seek a 570 plug in there for sure. Still riding them. Put 100, 210 miles on the on the Berg uh, a couple of days ago. Really good. How's the fuel economy in stock form? Uh, so basically we were kind of averaging i think you can read the test and i put the real numbers in there i think it was between 35 when we were riding in the sand sand dunes really and and just revving it you know <laughs> revving its brains out all the way up to almost 48 miles to the gallon when we were uh, uh doing more like dual sportish type riding kind of cruising around or slow single track trail riding um the bike is really efficient and another thing honda really nailed it on was their little um odometer gauge the the little uh, trip meter what it does is it has uh, two trip functions a and b and you can actually it'll tell you how much fuel is going through the fuel injector so it'll tell you how much you've used so even if you put a bigger gas tank on like we did um if you know your gas is three gallons it will tell you when you've used three gallons of fuel and that's kind of a good thing because if you change your gas tank size and it's actually just showing you when it gets low, you don't know when it is. The fuel light still works and everything, but that meter and it shows you actually in use, like a, like a when you're riding, it'll show you what your fuel economy is based on how you're riding it. And I mean, you can hold it wide open, you can see it drop down to like maybe 18 or so when it gets down low, or if you're kind of cruising around, it's up around in the 50s sometimes. You're going down a hill. I mean, I got 99 miles to the gallon for a little while. <laughs> so it's kind of a cool feature to see. And then you have your two trips to kind of, you know, do averages if you're trying trying different things and stuff. But the one thing I will tell you is when you put the fuel tuner on there, uh, all of a sudden it's not as accurate. In fact, uh, we got up to like a 20% variance. So in other words, we were dumping 20% more fuel into that motor than the bike thought it was because it basically interrupts the signal at the at the fuel tuner so um that's the uh that's the uh dual on the fuel economy hey do they have hair and dare in here uh yeah hey, janie you're gonna have to start looking at this feed on the facebook's at some point and answer some of these questions they're for a bartender not a motorcycle guy yeah you got it yeah <laughs> And Doug, if you missed the first few minutes, uh, don't worry, I was stumbling around like, uh, um, yeah, we won't talk about it. He was, and that was before the tequila. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Does it feel lighter? Um, I went into that a little bit. It definitely feels lighter than the old um, no? 450X. It's it's maybe not as planted and dead feeling. It's a little more agile and lively. So when you're you're kind of like wanting to bounce or jib off of things, you know, when you when you lay it over in a turn, it picks itself back up a little bit easier. Um, in that in that aspect, they've done a really good job. The bike feels like kind of narrower, like it sits a little taller. And even though most people felt that the seat height felt lower, um, the bike feels up a little bit and and a little more um, just agile is what I would say, like 10 to 20% more agile. It's still not as light and agile feeling as a KTM. It's more along the lines of where I would consider the beta at, um, but not, um, I don't know, it's different. It feels like the beta carries its weight a little bit higher up, the spinning stuff where the Honda feels like it's actually down pretty low. So hopefully that um, uh, answers that question. Um, let's see, is change in oil just like the r and the rx yes it has that huge drain hole at the bottom um so you have to take the skid plate off it's three um 10 millimeter head bolts and uh i noticed this today i actually changed oil on it today um the one that's on the bottom is 
it's protected, it's up out of the way, but it get, can get hit by rocks. And I had some rocks obviously hit it and it had a hard time getting the uh, socket onto it to take it off. I would prefer to see like a clasp, you know, something that clasps the frame and holds it up there on that back part as opposed to the bolt. But um, I don't think that's, like I said it in the test, I don't think that's necessarily the Honda way. Uh, getting the oil back in the bike is, yeah, it's a teeny, teeny tiny little fill hole. I like to lay it over on its side when I don't have the, the plastic side cover on. I have a recluse clutch in the bike, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I had the recluse clutch cover on the side, so I just I can't get, run the plastic cover. I took the big, it's just like the drain plug, the big side cover bolt off, and I poured the proper amount of oil inside of there and uh, call it good. So um, that's that one. Um, let's see. Trying to figure out some other stuff here. I think we're mm, internet slowed down on me, so I'm not sure about the uh, questions. But so the other thing we did complain about in the test is the clutch, and I wasn't sure what it was. It's something that we didn't experience on the R or the uh, we hadn't ridden the RX, but we'd ridden the R and then we rode the X, and the clutch components are supposedly identical. The pieces, maybe some different um, uh, material on the fibers. I was told but the activation, everything is the same. And we were stall on the bike quite a bit. And I know when I'm screwing up on the clutch and I stall it, but this was bike was vague, you know, the, the engagement point and, and it's a nice light pull. It's easy to um, pull the clutch in and control it. But what the problem is, it's like the engagement point where it actually kind of grabs was, was vague and it was always moving around. So we reached out to recluse. Um, I've, I run recluse auto clutches in pretty much all of my personal bikes and but I didn't want to just jump right into the auto clutch so they have the torque drive uh, system we got all of the um, we got that and put it in there first and the problem eh, mostly went away um, it just made the engagement um, a little bit tighter and a little more precise so when you're adjusting the clutch and especially when it starts getting hot if you start abusing it um, it seems like it stays a lot more consistent and the stalling uh, really uh, is, I wouldn't say eliminated, it's mostly eliminated. And then we started playing around with the auto clutch and we went to the, um, the uh, torque drive, let's see, the torque drive clutch. I have a hard time with, uh, with, na with names of things and stuff. But the, uh, so we went with the, I'll try to figure it out. <laughs> the basically the one is the the full kit and one is just basically the EXP disc. So we threw the EXP disc in there and that like literally because you're not using the clutch anymore eliminated all of the problems with it. And then when you go to the uh, the core EXP, which is the Radius X, that's what it's called. So when you go to the Radius X um, CX, it's adjustable. And you can you can kind of adjust the gap inside of the basket and really tune it so that the lever still works like a normal clutch. When you go to just straight CX or just straight Radius X, it you, the lever is always kind of locked out and it's it's you when you when you pull it in it isn't is controlled. With the CX, it's a lot more control at the lever, so you can still if you'd like to use it as a normal clutch. And then again, all of that's completely eliminated. So when we started changing those parts out, um, what we noticed was that there's probably some flex in the inner and outer bas not the not the outer basket, but the pressure plates on the on the Honda stuff. And there's some flex, and then a little bit of flex inside of the plates and stuff. And it sort of makes it a little bit little, just like I said, a little bit vague in the engagement point. So when you have a light flywheel motor, when you have um, a bike that doesn't have a whole lot of I mean, it has torque. It's just at zero throttle. You know, when you when you time the wrong throttle with the right clutch and vice versa, the bike has a tendency to be a little bit stalling. Like I said, I don't think it's a characteristic of the motor. I think it's more a char characteristic of the clutch or, or a, a slight issue with the clutch. And we were able to make that pretty much go away. So um, hopefully that, uh, that answers that question. Um, and we'll roll down here. And we're kind of we're kind of back. Is the guy with the guitar ever gonna play? <laughs> He's just a stunt guitar. Um, maybe kind of like I'm a I'm a stunt. Uh, 
washed up motorcycle racer here. So, um, anyways, we'll kind of move on to tequila number two, right? Um, so these are little uh, half flights or little half shot things of tequila, um, and you get you know you get certified. I'm on the list over here for having them. Uh, it's my uh, this will be 190. Cheers. Mm. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, so we're going to try to do this on a regular basis. So if you're ever uh, driving through from Nevada and you want to swing through Ramiro's and hang out with us, that would be, that'd be uh, just swell. You can ask questions live here um, from, the, from the pit um, <laughs> as, as, they, as they laugh. This is just our local little bar. We bring our uh, schools down here and uh, pack the place out on the, on the, uh, on the weekends and stuff. I think they're only allowed to show up if they join the tequila club. Yeah, and you can jo join the tequila club is free. Um, it's a lot of work to get where you know I've, I spent a lot of hours in here um, working research. on this it's thing. Lots of research. Yeah, we'll, ca we'll we'll call it research, and we'll get back into the questions. I think we're kind of wrapping this thing up. Um, trying to think if there's other things we want to talk about with the bike. So the other modification we did do was put an IMS gas tank on our bike um, because. Frankly, two gallons isn't enough for, especially out here where we ride. I mean, literally, to get to the nearest gas station when you ride away from town is probably 60 or 70 miles, and that's cutting it close, and that's kind of almost if you go beeline. So in that aspect, yeah, it's it's not enough. Um, I can see where some people do some trail riding and stuff where 50 and 60 miles is more than they'll do in a whole day. So uh, Honda fills, like, hey we're gonna make this tank small and we're gonna make the bike light and and the tank the stock tank is nice it's titanium it, you pick it up and it's feathery but we put the three gallon ims tank on it uh it runs the fuel range up to a little bit over 100 miles um you know safely luckily the light still comes on but you can always kind of watch the the gauge to see how um you're doing on fuel that's like i said that's one of the cool things in this bike um and width wise it isn't too bad there's a whole test up on the uh, gas tank up on the website if you'd like to see it we've also had it on our l which was even more important and because that bike we were riding even longer distances and i wouldn't even mind seeing more of a you know rally style you know a larger four to five gallon tank um hopefully um some of these companies will uh, hear that and um, put it out there because i mean you'd see guys out turning these into kind of like dual sport uh, especially with you know the sharing all the same stuff as the L, uh, that you're going to want to do long ranges and and out here if you don't have five gallons sometimes you just can't make the the fuel range so uh, that's the n another thing we did on it uh, we changed the tires um, we went to some Michelin um, Starcross fives uh, the medium compound uh, I was actually really happy with that I've always um, been a big fan of the Michelin tires. Um, they're, they seem to be a little more bump compliant, a little softer, and and especially when you're trail riding this bike, uh, that for me really helped out the the chassis feel. It is almost like I you know got a little bit softer initial compression on the suspension. Um, I can see, um, and and that's one thing that a lot of people always kind of forget is like the tires. That's what's connecting to the ground. It's a huge thing. So if you have your favorite tires and there's a characteristic that you do or don't like, you know, sometimes just by experimenting with different sets of tires, uh, you can make a big change to the bike. And that for sure, that for sure did. Um, I kind of expected that to happen and, and I was pretty happy with it. Some people that don't like a softer tire may not like that. They would prefer the standard, the standard Dunlops and the Dunlops are good tires. They, you get good, um, good durability out of them. Uh, um, I'm having basically the same durability out of the Michelin's, but I will tell you, for some reason, we've had more front flat tires on this bike <laughs> than any bike in recent history. And even at the intro, I told the Honda guys, I said, no, no, they had it up at like 14 or 15 pounds. And they said, because it was really rocky where we rode, and they go, oh, we don't want to get flats. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't hit rocks. Put it, put it down mm -hmm. to like 12, like 10 miles into the ride, I <laughs> smacked a rock and got a flat tire. So on me, <laughs> but, uh, and, and, and the problem is is even running the Dunlops at the lower pressures, you all of a sudden you do start, and I like to run lower pressures, 12, 13, even when it is rocky. Um, and I haven't had, well, yeah, I think we had two flat tires on the on the Michelin fronts and I think three on the Dunlop. So I don't, that thing has a magnet for rocks on its front wheel. Um, blame the riders. So 
Um, okay. Let's see. Going to go back to the questions one more time, and then we're going to wrap this thing up. Uh, let's see. Is the X still in existence because EPA regs don't want them making the X still? Can you elaborate on this at all? Um, I did at the very beginning of the of the podcast. I know I got a little distracted when I was when I was doing it, but there's um, a lot of people that want to buy a dirt bike that they can ride all year round in California, and there's a lack of them right now. You can go buy a dual sport bike, but then you have all these lights, and sometimes you have to buy you know you have to buy insurance for it, and so Honda's kind of fit in this really nice niche where there's not a lot of um, you know EPA uh, dirt bikes available that actually run this good. It doesn't have to be modified at all. And and I'd still tell you if you just want to go buy a bike and pour gas in it and change the oil every two or three months, if you're riding once or twice or less, maybe change the oil once a year, um, clean an air filter, and just ride this bike for forever. It's a great bike for that. Um, you don't have to modify it, and it's nice and quiet. You can talk to your buddies when you pull up and idling next to them, and uh, that's the that's the main reason for it. The, and Honda makes an RX, so if you don't want the quiet, corked up version of this, and you want something that's a little bit faster, a lot well, stock a lot faster, not faster, more snappy and more power feeling. Um, I think it's about. I had the dyno charts. I should have. I should have. Uh, um, looked at it, but it's 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 in the test. We talk about it. Um, you can buy the RX, and you're going to be pretty happy. But you don't get a six speed. You don't have um, uh, the odometer. You don't get the lights. It's a it's basically a race bike. It's more for Grand Prix and stuff like that. So, anyways, uh, let's see. David's asking about the green skipper. Yeah, I just uh, kind of elaborated on that a little bit. Um, and then uh, let's see. I think I think that's about it. So unless we have a few more questions, that's our. Uh, I don't know how long we've been going for this. First one. First one. First one. Yeah, I'm still. I'm still. I still got one more tequila and three tacos to come. So, <laughs> cheers. Um, we'll probably start doing a little bit more of these. We'll start lining questions up. A plan for this a little bit more in advance so it's not such a last minute thing and with dirt bike test we're only growing I mean this is just kind of the beginning of what we're um, starting to do uh, we're learning as we go and we found that if we just talk about it we don't do it so I just decided to do it if you like this like it share it with your buddies um, Mark just the one of these days we'll get it. some uh, we'll get a little bit more sponsorship going so we can afford to do this um, right now it's a few guys in our spare time having a good time doing it and watch closely on dirt bike test is going to be looking for test riders soon that's right you can be a dirt bike test test rider email jimmy at dirtbiketest.com to find out more that's a nugget oh we got another question yep what's that one big lights big lights will it run big lights um if in the led age yes because those don't really require all that much power and I'm pretty sure because this is the same ignition that's on the L and it has it has a fan and all this other stuff. The X does not have a fan, uh, doesn't need one for most stuff. Um, maybe if you're going to try extreme enduro, but this is the wrong bike for extreme enduro. You might need a fan. We have put a little bit of coolant into the coolant tank, but it's sucked it all back in and we've never had to add any. So um, but the big lights, yes, I'm pretty sure you could run enough lights to get you through the Baja 1000 at night. Uh, no problem. Uh, just running it straight off the battery uh, that's that's my guess you know a couple big Baja designs uh, squadron pros would uh, be really nice on that thing so okay uh, that's good thanks for joining in we had a, a little bit of engagement a little bit of interest uh, thanks for all the questions and I will see you out on the trail now I gotta figure out how to turn this thing off <laughs>